everyone, and welcome to your 75th Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about mouse handling, and specifically, we're going to talk about the three-method approach and the mouse tracking loop. And most of this information comes from uh, Apple's documentation, and one of my patrons slash friends uh, thought this was a good topic to do, and I kind of agree it's kind of a, a fun, interesting one to talk about uh, in ways that we can manage our controls in Cocoa. So the three method approach is probably the most simple to understand. It basically, the three method literally just stands for three different methods, which are mouse down, mouse dragged, and mouse up, or a variety of the right click uh, variants, however you uh, wanna see that. But basically um, how that kind of looks is just like this. So uh, on the right side, I have this little uh, subclass of NSView and I'll show you what that looks like. So. I have this thing called tracking button, just a subclass of NSView. And basically the three main important parts are that it implements mouse down, mouse dragged, and mouse up, uh, aka three methods. So if I look at uh, this view, we can see I get a mouse down event and I can drag and I get mouse dragged events. And then if I let go, I get a mouse up event, right? And this is essentially what sort of uh, a button would look like for your own implementation. Now, the interesting thing about this is that, um, well, it works and that uh, this little timer that I have going here is still going and that might not seem interesting to you. But if uh, you do the same thing for a standard NS button, so if I press down on an NS button and I drag it around and I don't even need to drag it around, it's just the first time I press down on it, you'll notice that the timer stops incrementing, the timer stops firing. And the same actually occurs for menu items as well. If I click on a menu item, you'll notice that the timer has stopped until I eventually click somewhere else and then the timer will resume. So what is happening here? Well, um, the uh, standard answer basically is these are the differences between the three method approach and the mouse tracking loop. So um, basically the three method approach doesn't block any events from occurring, right? We're just in queuing event upon event, and we just keep, you know, uh, taking them in as they come. And so the timer is still on the default run loop, and it's going to keep processing those changes. So uh, just a quick thing to look at for this timer, how we set it up. It's just a simple timer, it increments time and changes the label, and we added it to the default run loop. Now, if I actually change this to be on the common run loop, we would see that this actually resolves the issue of uh, the button blocking the events for it, or it would block, uh, fix the problem of the menu items blocking the timer as well. But uh, specifically, this is kind of uh, a case that we can see that when we add it to the default run loop, basically the mouse tracking loop, which is what the button and menu items are essentially doing, is they are blocking the event stream from uh, taking in other events. Another way we can see this is if we uh, simply, uh, so if I press down on the button, and actually let me just do an example of this view first. So I'll press down on this button, and I'm gonna hit Command P, which is to print something. And because printing isn't actually allowed, or I haven't set it up at all in this application, I'll get the alert still for you know printing not allowed. Uh, however, if I do the same on the button where I've pressed it down, I'm still holding the mouse, and I hit Command P, and I'm gonna hit it actually five times just to kind of show you what happens here. And if I just let go of that, now actually those five events finally get uh, thrown on to being processed, right? So they're basically being held off until we finish off the events. So this is kind of how we can, uh, you know, have a narrower fine grain approach to monitoring the events that get played. Perhaps while you are processing a button event, you actually don't want other events to occur, right? And so what we're gonna show you is uh, sort of how we can accomplish this using a mouse uh, mouse tracking loop. So the tracking button here, uh, like I already showed you, has mouse down, mouse dragged, and mouse up. And so just to get rid of these print statements this is kind of what this thing looks like. Now, um, if I had to uh, keep state between these three, Obviously, I'm gonna need a bunch of different instance variables to kind of keep the state, right? So let's say I had um, a particular part of the view that if I hovered over that maybe it's there's like a little X or something, maybe I would draw a circle around it or something. 
And if I did that, right, I'd have to uh, basically capture the state between uh, different things, like did I press down on this while I'm dragging, right? All these different state variables I'd have to basically keep in line across all three of these methods. So this, the state of just kind of dragging can start to uh, get brought out into the rest of the, the, the class itself, which isn't an awful uh, thing. But the, the other really big thing, right, is obviously that um, I, if I wanted to block different like key presses, for example, I have to basically um, know that, okay, I'm, I'm in mouse down. I then have to keep a state to say, okay, I'm in a mouse down operation right now. And then I'd have to block those events from occurring. And there wouldn't really be a way to fire them necessarily at a later point in time. So this approach um, is very good for what it is. It's probably the simplest approach in doing mouse uh, dragging events. But uh, there isn't really a great way to block other events from occurring if you need to block them. So that's where the mouse uh, mouse tracking loop comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these calls here. And I'm going to put in the code that I've already written for the mouse tracking loop. And we will explain that here. So the logic is pretty straightforward. Basically, we're going to set up a loop. So this is my little while loop here. And I'm telling the, the, I'm telling the window basically, well, that you can do this on the application or the window level, but preferably the window level because you're in a view and you have access to the window directly. So we can basically say, okay, um, I only want to receive events that match whatever these particular events are. In this case, I'm trying to match uh, the mouse dragging and mouse up. And so when those events do happen, I'm going to get one of those events, and now I'll be inside this loop. And I just convert, basically, like I was doing previously in my mouse drag logic, I'll convert the location of this event from, for the mouse to my view coordinates. I check to see if the mouse is inside of our view. And then if it is, I just have to figure out what kind of event I'm performing. So if I'm doing a mouse dragged, I will simply highlight the uh, the view right as you can see when our application right as I drag and move into it anytime I'm inside the view bounds I want to highlight and if I'm not I don't want to highlight and then if a mouse up occurs if I'm inside the, the button that's our fake button that we have here then I'll execute the button press and if uh, once I'm done with that I don't want to be highlighting anymore and then I of course need to break out of this loop somehow because we are no longer monitoring these operations. Now, this is one of the kind of, uh, you know, dangerous things with doing tracking loops is that you need to figure out how to actually break out of the loop properly. So you always do need to make sure that somehow you're going to get out of this while loop or else, you know, you're going to be stuck in there and uh, that would be bad. So basically we're breaking out of this loop here and that'll exit our scope for mouse down and then we would be done. So um, if I implement it this way, I just want to show what the difference is in setting up mouse tracking loops. So now uh, I have this timer. Let me just make sure I switched it back to, so it's back to default. It's good. So if I press down now and I move around, we can see that the timer will stop because we are blocking all the other events from you know being played until, of course, I let go. And then the event loop will continue to process whatever events haven't yet occurred. All right, so um, with that, I wanna point out one more thing, which is uh, in the documentation that I'll point out in, the documentation will also be in the description. Um, so one thing that we might wanna do is actually implement how uh, we define key presses to occur, right? So uh, like I showed you before, actually let's just switch over to the application before I make this change. So if I do this, right, and I hit Command P three times and let go, we can see that those events get played back uh, like we kind of expected. If, however, I want to make, if I don't actually want those events to be played back later, I could implement something like key down. And I could implement this case for key down to basically just do something else. And in this case, uh, it's really easy just to do a little beep noise. So we'll do NS beep. And um, that's it. So we'll, we'll do a beep and so we can see kind of what happens there. So now if I go up here and I do a command P, 
Well, you can, I don't know if you can actually hear it or not, but there is a beep noise coming from my computer. And then if I let go of my mouse, uh, the event continues, but those key downs were processed in that event loop and they don't actually get, uh, you know, queued on to the end essentially. So if you do not want uh, the events to occur at a later point in time, you can absorb those events into uh, this, uh, this mouse tracking loop. And the other nice thing about this is that all of your logic is really just contained in the mouse down. Now, obviously the downside of this whole thing though is that it is just contained in your mouse down. And if somebody was to try and subclass something like this, right, uh, just to override some kind of behavior, they can't just override mouse down or mouse up, right? I mean, they have to literally rewrite the entire logic for how your tracking loop works. And so unless you have some kind of you know, subclassing uh, entry point that you know subclassers could use. Then obviously, there's not really a great way of overriding the behavior in some si some type of subclass, which of course might be okay. But it's just something to be aware of that you know they're gonna have to override mouse down and rewrite the entirety of the mouse tracking logic. So anyway, with that said, those are the two different uh, kind of approaches that you can use for um, mouse tracking or uh, handling mouse events. So we've got the three method approach and the mouse tracking loop. Anyway, uh, thanks again for the suggestion and I will see you guys next week. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.